in this video, I'm going to talk about the eight things, actually not eight things, like a couple of things that I wish I knew before starting my master's in the US in fall 2024. A lot of juniors whom I talked to precisely like 45 juniors scheduled a call with me in the last 30 weeks to talk about different aspects of the MS application process, like based on the content that I've created on my LinkedIn and YouTube. One of the questions that was pretty redundant in different forms was that what are the things that I wish I knew before coming to the US or what are the things that I picked up after completing my first semester, which an incoming student should be kind of aware of. Before starting the video, let me just quickly introduce myself. I am Sohan Zoshi, currently a second semester graduate student and NYU pursuing management of technology. The series that I'm running on my YouTube channel is basically titled as the MS application series in which I've talked about different aspects of MS applications ranging from statement of purpose to literally finding your on-campus jobs before landing in the US. My resources are linked in the description which includes my newsletter, my Twitter, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Calendly as well through which students book slots with me which are completely free of charge. I don't charge a single dollar from you to talk to me. You can just check that and with all of this out of the way, let's start the video now. First point that I'm going to talk about is exposure and the availability of resources. If you are a tier two or a tier three college student in India and you are coming to the US for your masters and especially at a place like New York City and that too in like topmost colleges, you will see that the exposure that you had in India in your undergrad institute versus the exposure that you have here in the US will multiply massively. There's a huge difference between both of these scenarios. I made this tweet a couple of days ago, which you can see on the screen which is basically talking about the different levels of exposure that I got after coming to the US. So like starting from my coursework to NYU Tandon to NYU to, you know, NYC and then US, all the different levels of exposure, all the different levels of access to multiple resources here in the city, here in like the university both, which I, you know, got an experience of. So it's kind of overwhelmed, easy to get overwhelmed with so many resources that you get access to out of nowhere. But at the same time, I'm just making you aware of the fact that you do have so many things to do and you do have so many resources to look forward to. A lot of people that I see in my batch or like in general life scene around this, like they don't really explore anything much outside of their coursework or like outside of the internship and job search, which I agree is like pretty important. But I think all of this, all of these experiences that you have, like, you know, the, the experience that I'm having right now, like by meeting interesting people in NYU, NYC, you know, being a part of the product management club, talking to my professors, making connects with them. All of this stuff is also a part of my student life, which not a lot of people actually pay attention to. And if you look at it pretty objectively, it's not that you don't have too much of time. You actually have a lot of time provided you work like 70, 80 hours a week. You do have a lot of time to do all of these things. And also all of these things is, is what I feel. But the key idea here is that you should look for the entire playground or at least I looked at the entire playground before like, you know, sort of starting it, starting to exploit it in the, in the second semester. Like my first semester was all about understanding all the resources that I had. And that's when I made this tweet, but I'm just making you aware that you do have so many resources to look forward to and so much of exposure to also gather. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is based on the question that people asked me is coming to NYU worth, is coming to NYC and spending so much money worth, is coming to the US worth and so on and so forth. The worth depends on how much you make out of it. Like I said, there are so many resources, there are so many things to do, there are you know, multiple opportunities to grab here, like in general as a master's student, so many things to experience as a master's student. But if you're like sitting in your room and you're not really generating that momentum, generating that action to go out and do things you are not going to find the program or the, like the entire experience worth. So if you are expecting that just because you are into NYU, just because you are in a, I don't know, tier one school here in the US again, things will be coming to your plate. It's so not the case. You have to go out and make things happen for yourself. The hard work that you put after coming to NYU is actually much more than the hard work that you put to come to NYU, if you get the point of what I'm saying. So you will get as much as you are willing to take in. Third thing is about understanding the fact that the level playing field has or will dramatically change for you when you come to the US. A lot of students, like a lot of us in India, most of us go through like these on-campus placements where, where you are essentially competing from the people from your batch and you get the job, which isn't, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I'm just saying that let's say the size of that field is X. And when you come to the US, you are basically competing in a field which is, I don't know, 10,000 X or even 100,000 X. It's, it's like a much wider field to compete in. But the key idea here is that you have to focus more on gaining skills, building proof of work, building your network, finding mentors, all of that stuff 
to like stand a chance in this massive level playing field that you have. The next thing is really about the importance of communication. I've seen a lot of people struggling with a speaking in English and B writing in English. Written is basically vast because it comes about about writing emails, writing like emails again, like cold emails, replying to emails, all of that stuff. Uh, you know, sending LinkedIn invites, asking for referrals, all of the written communication part of it and the verbal communication part of it. A lot of people here are maybe technically in the sense that they're good at that particular skill that they really like are good at, but they're not good at communicating the same thing. And again, like in New York, the whole essence of being in New York is to not stay in your room and go out and meet as many people as you can, understand and seek mentorship from them in the relevant career fields. But if you're sitting at home um, and like you're not able to communicate with people, I think you are going to have a hard time. So like really polishing your communication skills and really working on them before even you come here is really important because I've seen a lot of people struggle with it. The other thing is to understand that anything that you are going to get here as the first meaning your, your professional first, meaning your first internship, your first on-campus job, your first project that you're going to like non-academic project that you're going to pair yourself with someone. All of these firsts that you're going to have here is going to be on the basis of the experience that you are bringing from your past. Like, you know, meaning your undergrad projects, undergrad internships, undergrad, you know, subjects that you took up, uh, you know, if you have a work experience, what did you do in your work experience and, you know, all of, all of that stuff. The reason why I brought this up is basically to understand that you, like, you know, especially in a degree like management of technology, people come here with engineering backgrounds and they think that as soon as they take up this course, they are going to dramatically shift into like, I don't know, like product marketing or like product strategy or like all of that stuff when you are a hardcore like engineer. The thing is like, it's kind of difficult to be shifting that dramatically in your first, you know, first internship or your first on-campus job itself. That shift usually is kind of incremental where you, let's say, you know, you move gradually. Let's say the way you move from hardware to software gradually for someone who is moving from electronics to computers, that's how the shift is like kind of gradual, right? You don't do it in like one go. So that's the whole point of like, you need to build on top of the previous experience that you've had. So like, these are the things that I wanted to uh, highlight. And like, these are the things that I wish I knew and I realized them after coming here. So a bunch of tweets also went along these lines after I came here, after I reflected in the Christmas break that we had, like, okay, these are the things that I learned. That's like the whole point about this video. So like, but take whatever you can from this video. Feel free to like schedule a call with me if you if you have any problem or if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, appreciation, whatever that is. And if you've finished watching this video, you might like this video here or like this video, I don't know where it is, but like this video here in which I've talked about landing your part-time job or on-campus job before coming to the US. So please check out this video and all the other videos which are also listed in the description. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.